Mixer, Jeff Rovin. Mr. Rovin, how are you, sir? Sean, very nice see. to meet you. Um, how did you meet the Clintons? I've been interviewing celebrities since I was 19, and uh, the editor of the Inquirer at the time, David Perel, good friend of mine, uh, said, hey, I've got a really bad story about somebody you just profiled in Ladies Home Journal. I said, if I can get you an interview, would you bury it? Uh, negotiations followed, but that began a decades-long career as uh, what Dylan Howard, the current editor, has yeah. said. Now, I did talk to Dylan about your piece, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. You know, a lot of people, they hear National Enquirer. Well, let me just put up a few stories that the National Enquirer broke that were correct. For example, the National Enquirer broke first and correctly. Uh, O.J. in the Bruno Mogli shoes, if you remember back at the time. The National Enquirer first broke John Edwards, the whole love child scandal. First the girlfriend, then the picture of the baby, if you recall. The story they broke also was Jesse Jackson's love child. The story the National Enquirer broke first and correctly, world exclusive woman at the center of Tiger Woods cheating scandal is exposed. And then the story they broke first and correctly, Gary Hart asked me to marry him. Uh, at the time, and they were the first to have photos of Hart and Donna Rice on monkey business, and there were other, you, they've gone after conservatives, they went after Rush and, and some other stories. So people attack it because it's a tabloid, but they have a pretty good track record. David Perel, uh, who ran the teams investigating most of those stories, is a journalist journalist. You may not like the material, but ironically it is so heavily vetted uh, because it is so uh, uh, controversial. Uh, it's probably better vetted than most of the uh, the stories in other media. Well, I went through with your editor everything that you had. You do have ledgers. You did have the faxes with the letterhead and the timestamps. Um, the Clintons know you. They're watching now. They know who you are. They know you fix things for them. Tell us about how you got to got in the business with them and what you did. Um, I was fixing something, I really don't like that term, but there it is. Uh, I was fixing something for an actor who was uh, in, their, uh, in their inner circle, and that was how I was engaged. Uh, now, it, it was that simple. I also, uh, as a ghostwriter for Tom Clancy, had met generals and undersecretaries. I knew where the back doors were in Washington. Uh, so there were different ways to deal with things. You knew when Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton went on 60 Minutes and he, they denied Jennifer Flowers, which eventually he admitted to in the Star Report, that he was lying. Yeah, you know, I thought this was going to be pretty easy when I first agreed to do it because um, you had Paula Jones, Jennifer Flowers, the stuff was out there. I figured, okay, we're done. We weren't. Uh, I would say that uh, David Perel's files, and I know that Dylan and his team uh, have their own files, but David's files were massive. I mean, we're talking Canterbury Tales massive. Um, and uh, the reason that I agreed to uh, participate in this process now was not an easy decision um, because I don't like publicity. Why did you? Yeah. Because Dylan showed me the article, there were names in there that I didn't feel should be in there, They're friends of mine, confidential sources that he didn't realize were confidential. Um, and I said to him, okay, I will participate, provided I can compare your article to my journals, take out these names, and most importantly, and this is going to have the odor of hypocrisy considering the story itself, I wanted to write an editorial condemning the salacious nature of political reporting now. Look, the New York Times has become the Inquirer, the Inquirer has become the New York Times. The world is upside down. We've got to set it right again. All right, so your job was to help hide their scandals. And the degree to which you're saying they had an open marriage, you're talking about hookers, you're talking about um, dirty tricks, buying off journalists, and much more. Why don't you give us specifics? Well, again, let me, let me qualify that by saying these are Dylan's words. One of the reasons I wanted to come on your show... Is there anything that's not true in what no, I said? No, no, no. no. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to come on your show is to put things in a little less hyperbolic way, mm. perhaps. A little less sensational? Yeah, uh, without the screen. You don't think paying off people and having an open marriage and... It's, to me, it's, it's not my business and it's nobody else's So you're business. libertarian in terms of people's sexuality. That doesn't matter to you. My personal feelings were irrelevant in this. It was really a matter of, look, uh, when you are at the White House 
and turn a corner and there's the Gilbert Stewart portrait of George Washington that's on our money. When you walk in the Rose Garden with your wife, you get seduced. Uh, you want to protect the people who are helping you have that access. And that happened to you? To a degree, sure. And I was only on the periphery. You can imagine what How many happens. times were you in the Clinton White House? Uh, twice. I was okay. there twice. What about one of the big issues that I think matters? Hillary claims she's a champion of women's rights. You have, I assume this came from you to Harold Dickey's, a lot of redactions in it, though, about how to smear Monica Lewinsky. Actually, that particular uh, document came the other way around. It was. It, it was, was. It was. It says to Mr. Ickes from. Yeah, the, the from was one of the reporters that we hired to dig into Monica's story. And um, that document. And, and they were out to smear her in a major way as being nuts and, you know, very unstable, emotionally needy. I don't, you know, all sorts of dirt. But here's the irony of this. That document has been in the files of the tabloids for 20 years because I was told, send this to your contacts, see if they can dig up more information. And uh, I'm, I'm only glad that I got to apologize in person to Monica. You did? Uh, yeah, I did. Where? Uh, <laughs> she became my neighbor in New York in one of those cosmic karmic uh, ironies. Wow. Uh, and, and you told uh, her what you did and who paid you. And, uh, well, well, you I, say you never got paid. Did you? You never got paid? I never got paid for this. No. Why would no. you be a fixer and not get paid? Because I was working with people who were involved. Well, you with got that. money to pay off other people. Correct. And who gave you that money? Right not going to get into that. Those are some of the names that I wanted out of the original article. So there were certain people that would give you money. Was there ever threats if you either knock it off or will break your legs? No. It was first Nothing, of all that, Not necessarily from you. I'm, I watch a lot of movies. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean... The, or was it all bribery? Um, it was all bribery, but it was more... Payoffs. Yeah, because you have and to... And was there, was there a sort of a threat, a subtle threat given, you, you're going to shut up now? Anything uh, like, well, that, that's no, a fair question. No, it's absolutely a fair question, but the, the, the trickle-down or trickle-up nature of this was the tabloid sources that I would pay would then go to their sources, who were invisible people like limo drivers, hotel clerks, wait staff, security guards, who would see and hear things and would tip them off. So it went from that group to the reporters to me, and then I had to make the decision about how to deal with it. And most of the time it was just money. There never had to be any threats. Um, what was your contact? Did, you're saying the Clintons directly knew what you were doing. I spoke to Hillary on two separate occasions uh, about certain things. Now, can you say what they are? Uh, I'd rather not at this point. Um, this, this is a big part of the question. Yeah, this would be important. I spoke to her at the, um, at the Roger Clinton wedding. Um, Where the National Enquirer had exclusive access. Yeah. yeah Maureen was, Dowd said it's not true. Yeah, well, we had exclusive complete access. You know, I know I saw Maureen had filed a, a story in the New York Times. Right. Um, you have to remember that every time I saw Hillary, uh, I was bringing bad news. The messenger got shot. Um, Would she, did she have the infamous temper we read about? Um, not with you? I wouldn't say there was a temper, there was a, a steeliness, there was a... A resolve of, to fix it. Yeah, uranium Would in the Would she tell you specifically, you fix this? She said she wanted it fixed. I tell you what, we got to take a break. We'll come back and we'll have more. This is a, a pretty incredible story about cover-ups and, well, about a life of the Clintons that they obviously don't want the American people to know. We'll continue with Jeff Robin. He is known as the fixer. This is the National Enquirer piece and also coming up tonight. And welcome back to Hannity as we continue with novelist and reported former Clinton fixer Jeff Robin is with us. All right, smearing happened. Money was paid, orders were given, you were to go out and damage the reputation of people like Monica Lewinsky. Um, well, I didn't personally go out and damage it, but... The, Part of an effort. The, it was a team effort, yeah. Got it. Um, this was an open marriage with the Clintons. So it's been said. Well, wait a minute. That's, that's, that's hedging way too much here. No. That's yeah, what the I piece mean, says. Look, if... if if screaming uh, is to be uh, is to be taken as validation, there were there were harsh words behind closed doors that we all heard. 
and their effort was to destroy Monica Lewinsky, destroy her. That was the original concept, and I have to say that as this proceeded, because the president kept insisting there was nothing there, and ultimately, and again this may sound strange, to his credit, he's the one who put the kibosh on using any of this material. They also claim that in fact Hillary did in fact have a romantic relationship with Vince Foster. That, you know, that was pretty much of an open secret where in, in our circles um, and, uh, you know, the order to, uh, to uh, intervene with the press for at least a half hour after he committed suicide. Will you let the media look at these ledgers, the, the 24 years worth, of, I guess, that you handed over to Dylan, the, the years worth of notes and calendars and, or the ten, this 10-year 10 period? Will you let the public, would you let journalists see that? I'd have to think about that. Uh, certainly... The things that Dylan saw that put this piece together. Yeah. Uh, it required me to be there to interpret uh, a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, my shorthand. But sure. um, the fact that my dates lined up with his dates and his information was what was important. It, it is interesting because one of the worries of the Clinton campaign, and we saw this in WikiLeaks and John Podesta, and in particular his relationship with this woman that the Secret Service has labeled the Energizer and the subject line read Julie which is a real name and saw her picture in the Enquirer Podesta wrote to Cheryl Mills obtained by WikiLeaks probably need to revisit the Whitehaven conversation that seems to corroborate well but that's just my point the Enquirer has its own independent resources and again I, I have to stress I came forward primarily to protect the people that I worked with what is this tape that you, that the inquirer had that you came in and got and you traded off special access to Roger's wedding what is that uh, I was alerted to the fact that there was an audio tape from an answering machine mm -hmm. uh, involving in which the president's name was invoked uh, a liaison with a young woman was uh, recommended or suggested, I forget which, um, and as soon as we found out about that, we wanted it to be killed. It had been offered to the Inquirer. I called David Perel and he said, well, uh, if you've got something more newsworthy, we'll consider it. Mm -hmm. I went back to uh, my people with that and we decided the wedding was probably more newsworthy. How many reporters were paid off to kill stories for the Clintons? Uh, again, that you know of, they they were they were paid to soften the stories um, or kill it. Uh, they eventually got out in diluted form, um, but we had I think five primary tabloid reporters for the Enquirer, the Star, and the Globe uh, who were watching out uh, for everything that went on editorially. Mm -hmm. And uh, could anyone pay to get a story killed? Pay. Could you pay to get a story? They're writing a story about you. Could you go to them and say, I'll give you X dollars to kill the story? We'll find out tomorrow, but I don't think so. You don't think? But how, are these prominent? Is this the New York Times, ABC, no, CBS? No, 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 no. These are tabloid reports. What would happen is if we got wind of a story from the tabloids, chances right. were pretty good it would end up in one of the mainstream newspapers or magazines. Mm -hmm. uh, we would then contact one of those people and say, this isn't true, don't run it, here's... Right, final two questions. Yeah. What do you want people to take out of this? What do you, in other words, you say you're libertarian, you don't care about people's private life. Okay, this is pretty salacious stuff. Yeah. What do you want people to take out of that? It's a stinking business. It's an absolutely rotten, stinking business. Are the Clintons, are the, are the Clintons stink because they, they hire people like you to kill stories for no, them or are they smart? It's absolutely necessary, unfortunately. For and, them? And for everyone. I mean, if, if you've seen Wiener, you, you know what I'm talking about. Right. It's um, the, the main appeal of this to me and the risks that I am taking professionally to do this. I, I don't know what's going to happen to the TV series based on my novels. They could die tomorrow. Right. Um, the, the important message to get out, and you've said it yourself, is the election is too important to focus on this salacious That raises material. my last question. Who are you voting for? Because <laughs> obviously people are going to wonder, is, are you doing this because you like Donald Trump? I am not doing this for or against any candidate. I am doing this uh, hopefully to, to level the playing field. Level it and I, I hope that this stuff is so unpalatable that we just stop. I mean, I know that's 
an absurd dream. It sounds like you like Trump, though. Um, I like Trump, sure. Well, you voted.